a follower of Christ, uh, I'm just so blessed to be able to know him, uh, to come back to his teachings again and again. And not only his teachings, uh, Jesus I don't regard as just a, a guru or a great rabbi or teacher uh, or philosopher or something, but I regard him as my savior and uh, my friend, my God. So to follow Jesus uh, is life-changing, absolutely. Um, I look back on my life, he's been with me throughout my life. Uh, he's changed my life. He's changed, rearranged my life. And I just praise him for that. He's the reason I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here talking about him in this video. So I just want to go to two of his teachings from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Uh, two teachings that have really uh, spoken to me throughout the years and even recently. The first one is the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy, and thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. This is the first teaching I just want to reflect on together a little bit, and I wish I could hear your thoughts on it as well. Um, but because of the um, unilateral nature of at least this video presentation, I guess I'll just share a couple of thoughts. And uh, if you want to share yours in, in the comment section of this video, I'd love to hear them. Um, we could have a little conversation. So this, this really stands out to me. When Jesus says, where your treasure is, there also will your heart be, your, your soul. Uh, your your person, all that you are. Um, uh, in other words, uh, what you you worship is who you are. It's what you orbit around in this life. I remember reading this passage when I was still in high school, and uh, I had a lot of dreams and and goals in life, and there's something good about that. But to the point that I was really idolizing. Of certain things. One of the things was I wanted to play quarterback at the University of Notre Dame and where I grew up very close to the campus about 40 minutes north in southwest Michigan. Uh, and if, looking back on my life it was almost like I what I was worshiping was was uh, the Heisman Trophy or the football stadium as a kind of shrine or something. And uh, even to make a confession that not many people know. Uh, I remember one time I was in the kitchen talking with my mom and uh, she was encouraging me, Donnie, you know, maybe you should pray about what God wants you to do with your life. And I said, Mom, Notre Dame is God. God is Notre Dame. <laughs> That's how I put it to my mom some time in high school in the kitchen. and. You could tell I was a little off base with those words, and I, I spoke them passionately, I remember at the time. Uh, in any case, I'd like to uh, again testify to how Jesus has worked in my life that I don't worship Notre Dame anymore. Um, I don't uh, worship the sport of football anymore, and uh, I try to worship God alone these days. And uh, I try to be faithful to the vocation that he's given me as husband and father and also as a philosopher and, and theologian uh, at Sacred Heart Major Seminary right now. So uh, where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. I think it's just a great question really Jesus is presenting to us. When he, when he says this, he's he's. He's kind of forcing us to ask, what is my treasure? What do I value more than anything else in this world? And that is what I give the most worth to or worship. That's what I adore. Uh, so hopefully each of us would want 
that greatest treasure to be um, the one that is is uh, most worthy of our worship that is our creator our loving God the second passage I want to look at uh, also is is kind of uh, demanding and it's also the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 7 beginning in verse 13 where Jesus says to all who have ears to hear enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction and those who enter through it are many how narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life and those who find it are few wow so we might wonder again the thing I like about Jesus' teaching is that it keeps us wondering what do you mean narrow gate and constricted road and all of this and, and we have to work to connect the dots of meaning as we listen and ponder his teachings uh, according to the whole of scripture and tradition of the church and within our life of prayer um, for me what, is, what has this meant over the years that gate is as narrow as ever uh, at age 42 I am now and uh, I feel like more and more I know what Jesus is, is talking about uh, and it's uh, it's a life of virtue, but not virtue that we perform on our own by our own power. But it's it's that virtue that's animated by the gift of God. In the, uh, Christian theology, we call grace. More specifically, we call the third person of the Most Holy Trinity, God the Holy Spirit, acting in us. And uh, lately I've been watching uh, some videos on YouTube of astronauts. And the International Space Station. And I'm like, how can they be up in that that constricted space for months? And then that even more constricted little capsule that gets them back to Earth. Uh, it's just like, wow. Uh, I'm just amazed. And I'm like, the, the mental toughness that these men and women must have as astronauts. And... And I was talking uh, to my son Aubin about this. I was like, "How do you think they do this?" Because I think I would be claustrophobic. Um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't do what they're doing. And he said, "They probably just have a passion about what they're doing. They love to learn. They love this adventure. Um, they're fascinated by outer space and things." And I said, "Yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense." Uh, but I think this is the Christian life too. To follow Jesus, we find ourselves in these narrow, constricted spaces. And the paradox is that these spaces themselves are the gateway to freedom and human flourishing. As Jesus says in the Gospel of St. John chapter 10, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So that's this paradox that, um, as he says elsewhere, if you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake and the sake of the Gospel, you will save it. It's a paradox. Uh, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. Uh, the greatest is the one who serves. These kind of things he teaches. So, uh, it's, it's, it's this call, it's this vocation to moral perfection. Again, not something I accomplish on my own, but something that is ultimately the gift of God. And yet I let it flow through me. I let it flow through the veins of my body and soul and therefore I am set free so um, these are some teachings of Jesus just some some brief thoughts on them uh, I hope it's meaningful in some way and again I'd love to hear your thoughts as well thanks so much and let's keep the conversation going <music>